Solved. But you promised also to, and I quote you again, maintain a low level of inflation in that speech to open Parliament at the start of the year. You failed. 5.3%, highest in 21 years. Yeah, That's a failure. No, well, I don't accept that either, because if you go, you've got to go and look at the data. I mean, the 5.3% includes a 2.2% uptick for the runoff adjustment of um, GST increase. Now, everyone knew that, so if you take yeah, that out. But that's real. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's I mean, real. This it's is real, not some technical discussion, is it? If you're sitting at home and your food bill's gone up because of GST, then you feel that. Uh, yes, but I mean, you've got to look at two things. Firstly, we care about inflation because we care, care about the changes in prices and the impact that has on consumers, and we care about inflation because of what the Reserve Bank might do to offset that inflation. So in the first instance, Reserve Bank's not going to do anything to offset that 5.3% because it's not concerned about nearly half of it because it knows why it's occurred. It looks through that in terms of the GST increase. Secondly, yes, of course the prices have gone up and that's reflected in inflation, but actually wages have gone up in terms of after-tax wages because of the tax cut. That's what's driving that. So it's, it's not an isolation. People have more money in their hand and they pay slightly more for their goods because of GST. One of the key indicators of wages and one of the key ones that your government said was catching up to Australian incomes. Yeah. Are you making any progress in that regard? Well, you know, I think we are. Um, you know, we're three years into what's been a 40-year decline against Australia. But in real after-tax terms, we think we have narrowed the gap with Australia. And that's because... By how much? Uh, well, I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head. It's, it's, I think we've grown by about 9% in real after-tax terms. I think they've grown by about 6 but we've narrowed the gap. So why are people leaving in record numbers? In June, New Zealand had its highest migration loss to Australia in 30 years. 3,100 people left in that month alone, and for the year to June, 29,900 people. I yes. mean, you sat in a stadium last yeah. election campaign, didn't you, yeah. to illustrate a sports stadium full of people were leaving to Australia, and you failed to stem that tide. Well, you know, I wouldn't necessarily argue that. I mean, you've got to look, you've got well, to be careful about... You, with respect, how could you argue it any other way if well, people are leaving in record numbers? Well, one, you've got to look at things, um, you can't look at them in one isolation, one, one month. So June, for instance, we had the, the earthquakes in Christchurch. So, you know, some of those numbers are influenced by the fact that there are people in Christchurch who've said, look, I'm leaving. Um, I don't see a, sh you know, a short to me in terms to of... Surely you're not putting it down to Christchurch, are you? <laughs> in part. There are people who have left Christchurch. 30,000 people leaving, though. Oh, I mean, yeah, of course. Why are they going? Well, in Australia, actually, it's largely been around the mining sector. And, and look, there is a gap between our wages, and that gap is significant. It's around about 30%. So you are seeing, you know, quite an aggressive action by Australia who know that they have a shortage of skills, they see New Zealand as a well-educated population, and they target... New Zealanders, there's no question about that. But I mean, the, you can't click your fingers and wish this stuff would disappear. All you can do is work on lifting those after-tax wages. And as a government, we've been doing a pretty good job there. I mean, that's why we worry about building infrastructure in the form of labour markets, keeping on top of our debt position, cutting taxes. All of those things are about lifting productivity and lifting after-tax wages. We're making some gains. But I don't think anyone could argue we can reverse 40 years of decline in three years.